Hey everybody, it's Sarah Whiting here with St. John's Church Foundation in Richmond, Virginia. Thanks so much for joining us today for vlog number five. Today we're going to talk about the different styles and shapes of the grave markers and tombstones at Historic St. John's Church. We have a couple fairly unusual tombstones I'm looking forward to, to sharing with you all. A uh, quick, quick thing before we launch into this, I want to say thanks to everybody who's purchased a Graveyard Nerd t-shirt. Those have really helped us out while we're closed right now due to COVID-19. And don't worry, you can still get your own Graveyard Nerd t-shirt. The link is right down below. So thanks so much for joining us. I'm going to start by looking at box tomb styles, also known as chest tombs. And it makes sense to start with this style because uh, this chest tomb is the earliest visible grave marker in the churchyard. This is the tomb of Reverend Robert Rose. He died while traveling through Richmond in 1751. Chest tombs are massive rectangular boxes. They kind of remind me of shipping containers. And a chest tomb like this might remind you of an Egyptian sarcophagus. And we know that uh, Egyptian sarcophagi held coffins with bodies in it. But please don't worry. Rest assured, Reverend Robert Rose is buried in the ground below his grand monument. Now this tomb was clearly meant to impress and shows Reverend Rose's social status. And that very large slab on top allows for a very long epitaph. And an epitaph is the inscription on the tombstone written in memory of the person buried there. Now this tomb was built to last and it's been here for 269 years. We did have it restored in 2017 with help from some of the descendants of Robert Rose and that was a really wonderful event. Now I like to show this next picture coming up. In it you'll see this wonderful elegant lady sitting on a box tomb and next to her is another chest tomb. What may surprise you is that chest tomb is no longer in the graveyard. It has disappeared. There it is surrounded in red. We don't know where it went, but sometimes people were moved to other cemeteries, so that may be the case here, but I can't imagine the job of moving that massive chest tomb. So now let's look at brick box tombs. Like chest tombs, they are rectangular shaped monuments that are placed over a grave, meaning that the person is not in the brick box, but they're buried in the ground below the grave marker. These box tombs have four sides and a slab top, which gives plenty of room for a very long epitaph. We've got lots of box tombs at St. John's Church, and this style was very popular in the eastern and southern parts of the U.S. And I love this example. Here's a box tomb surrounded by its own little iron fence. Now let's take a look at tabletop graves. And I bet you can figure out why they're called tabletops. They're also known as pedestal table graves. And like box tombs and chest tombs, there's a big surface to write a, an epitaph on them. Again, this is a tombstone that shows status and standing. Tabletop graves usually have six legs, but this example shows four legs because it's a shorter grave. Check out how massive and sturdy those tabletop legs are. The problem with inscriptions on flat top graves is that the writing on the top can get eroded over time due to weather, snow, rain, etc. And if the stone top is thin, then they can bow like you'll see in this example. These have five legs instead of six, and even with that center support there, they're still bowing. What's interesting about tabletops is that sometimes the pedestals or the legs can deteriorate and the slabs are remounted on brick boxes. And if this happens at St. John's, and we're not sure if it started out as a pedestal grave and became a uh, box grave, we'll just never know. Now this is interesting because you'll see here that one of the legs is not like the others and not sure how that happened that way. These two arch brick grave markers are really unusual. These are the markers of two siblings, little Joseph Williams, who died at 19 months, and his sister, Dorothy Williams, who died at six years old. Joseph died on September 13, 1823, and it's very sad that Dorothy followed almost a month later on October 11, 1823. Now these markers are little brick faults, and you can see how they're constructed in this back view here. And in the front, they have these little marble tablets inserted in the arch. The fact that these uh, markers are so solid, that just to me means permanence. And the parents who put these here wanted to ensure that their children's markers were here forever and there was no chance of their markers being lost. Another unusual and rare marker is this one right here. This is called a hip tomb. A hip tomb is a variation of a box tomb and it looks like a little hipped roof. 
Sometimes you see these with rectangular bases, so they actually look like little houses. Now this marker has nice detailing on the edges and that interesting banding at the top. And also this hip tomb is sitting on a box tomb, so it's a couple of styles combined. Now this is the grave of Mr. John McCrady, who died in 1807. His death is a remarkable story, and I'll tell you about that later in another vlog. But I'll give you the hint that his death is unusual, and almost as unusual as his tombstone. Mr. McCrady's wife is buried next to him in the box marker to the right there. Now I have to show you this picture because I want to remind you that the graveyard is beautiful all year round, and the McCrady's each fall are covered with a beautiful blanket of bright yellow ginkgo leaves. So let's look at some examples of pedestal markers, or also known as pedestal monuments. These are huge, solid marble or even granite markers. The, these large structures have four faces for inscriptions. They can be straight or tapered, or they can have a flat top or a pediment. They can also have an urn, like in this example. This is the pedestal marker for Dr. James McClurg and his wife, and you can see that there's a base for an urn, but unfortunately the urn has been lost. Luckily for us, we found this photo that shows the McClurg monument, and you can see the urn there. We were able to blow up the picture to see the urn in detail, and it's capped with this wonderful flame, also known as an eternal flame. Nothing's more eternal than stone. I have to ask, though, if you're ever in a flea market or an antique store and you come across the urn, buy it, we'll pay you back. We'd love to get this back in the graveyard. Now we're going to look at obelisks. We have some great examples here in the graveyard. An obelisk is a thin, four-sided, tapered monument with a pyramid on top. It's an ancient Egyptian design, and it was copied by the Romans and the Greeks later, too. But for ancient Egyptians, the obelisk is a symbol of purity and divinity. Here's a great old picture of the obelisks in the graveyard. Obelisks were the style for grave markers in America around 1820 to 1850, when the Egyptian revival style was all the rage. Like box tombs and chest tombs, the obelisks showed social status and standing. And the obelisk is perfect for Mr. John Ender's. Mr. Ender's obelisk is the one on the left there that has that outstretched hand. He was a member of the vestry at St. John's Church and also a very successful tobacco merchant in Richmond. Finally, let's talk about tablets. We have a lot of tablet markers at St. John's and in many different types of stone, including slate, sandstone, marble, and limestone. Tablets vary in size, shape, and thickness. We have some very tall examples and little short ones too. Since tablets are smaller than all of the other markers we've talked about today, they usually have limited space for information, and you only get the minimum, like names, birth and death dates, maybe a short phrase and a small image. Unfortunately, depending on the stone composition, they may not weather well, which causes the lettering, the dates, and the names to become so eroded you can't read them anymore. The most basic headstone type is like this one, a, just a plain old rectangle. A variation of this would be this one with a rounded top instead of the squared top. But let's talk about more elaborate tablets. They are made up of a tympanum in the middle, that's that hump in the center, and shoulders on either side. Shoulders can also be called finials. Here's a good example of shoulders. I really like these pictures because you can see the tympanum and the shoulders standing out against the snow. Most of our headstones also have matching footstones like you see in this example here. But often our footstones are just more simplified versions of the headstones and they just have rounded corners. What you see with the headstones and the matching footstones in these colonial graves suggests a bed. You can see a headboard and a footboard. Rest in peace indeed. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed this vlog about the styles and types of markers in our graveyard at Historic St. John's Church. And I invite you to join me this Sunday on Facebook and our YouTube page for my interview with Dr. Ryan Smith about his book on cemeteries in Richmond. And don't forget that you can ask us any questions about the graveyard. We'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks a lot.